Hello and welcome to my top 10 classic ZX Spectrum games. So back in the day I had a Spectrum, I pretty much had it the year it came out and I believe I had the 48k one was my original model and um, one of the top games that I played and these aren't in any particular order but I certainly put absolutely hours upon hours upon hours into this particular game which was Manic Miner and uh, this one was first released back in 1983 and it was written by a chap called uh, Matthew Smith and uh, published by Bugbite. Uh, later on it got re-released and, and published by Software Projects and I just spent a lifetime on this, an absolute lifetime. It's like a bit like a classic sort of platformer. You pay um, a chap called Minor Willy, and uh, you see him there dancing along the bottom. And uh, I think before I found out how to actually cheat at games, which was you could get on the spectrum, you could um, poke the memory, so you could put in a particular code in the memory. And I got one for this game eventually, which gave you like unlimited lives. And um, I was able to then finally do all 20 levels and, and see it right through to the end um, quite nicely it does show you all the levels and that's what exactly what we're sort of scrolling through right right now but um, I mean the guy was a real genius and when you think you know 48k I mean just phenomenal really what efficient coding that these guys had to work with and obviously this one inspired the sequel because it was such a big seller uh, Jet Set Willy and then Jet Set Willy 2 uh, absolutely massive games in their own right. It certainly just said Willie was, but um, Manic Miner for me has always got a fond sort of place in my heart. And um, this really was at the time a bit of an arcade competitor. I'd much prefer to sort of go home, play a bit of Manic Miner rather than spend my time, you know, potentially wasting money I haven't got in in an arcade, you know. Um, but yeah, absolutely phenomenal. And what we'll see here, as I said, I've got I've chosen ten sort of classic games that I remember playing when I was a kid on the uh, the ZX Spectrum, but I could have easily chosen probably 50 games that I played quite a bit. It was for like a two year period from about 83, there's the final screen, from about 83 to 85, um, the ZX Spectrum was, you know, it took over my life. I even did, you know, I used to code in games and software from magazines, even had a stab at making a couple myself with some friends. So yeah, really, really quite an influential system this one and uh, one i've always loved to this day and so good to be able to play these now on um very very easily on emulators on your uh, on your your pc or tablet um absolutely fantastic and i will show you the emulator that i use which has changed a little bit in in more recent years and i used to use a chrome plugin called uh, the unreal specky unreal spectrum emulator but now i i use one called JS Specky 3 which is uh, like an in-browser one and um, we'll have a little look at that towards the end but yeah that's my first game Manic Miner I think absolutely fantastic you know it's, it's a tough one to be and I wanted to show you all those levels as well now the first but definitely not the last of the games that we're going to see from Ultimate Play the Game and that's a Jetpack and uh, this is sort of a shooter video game and uh, it was developed and published by Ultimate Play the Game that's the uh, the Stamper Brothers Chris and Tim Stamper at the aim of the game of this one you fly your little jet man around and uh, you have to first get the bits of the ship which is in three parts then you have to start fueling it up so you fly around and it's a very very busy little bit of space there you've got your asteroids coming at you and um, you can pick up little power ups and, and boosts along the way extra life sometimes as well and you have to fill your little spaceship up there drop all the bits in now like a lot of these spectrum games it does take a little bit of time you know you want to give it five ten minutes to get the swing of the controls um, because the spectrum keyboard the original one was you know quite the, the buttons were quite close together not so much the case on a sort of a larger keyboard that you might find on a computer today and um it's very difficult to like remap the buttons on these old sort of spectrum games so you have to sort of go with what was set up at the time and it's not always that easy it's definitely not very easy to get um compatible uh, joysticks or anything working with these so you i tend i never really use them when i had a spectrum so i tend to use the original controls which does take a little bit of getting used to 
but yeah this was an absolute classic and i really really enjoyed it um obviously came out on some other systems as well as the spectrum but this was a 16k one it even came out on a on a spectrum rom cartridge as well as uh the cassettes which is what most of these games got released on truly truly amazing and a uh, big fan of ultimate i love all their games and i'm throwing this one in this isn't actually part of my 10 releases but i just wanted to throw it in because this was almost like an unofficial sequel it um it came out the same year but it was 48k rather than 16 and um uses the same sort of control system the same a lot of the same graphics as well um and uh yeah lunar jet man rather than uh jetpack Next one then is a one a lot of people don't really remember this Bugaboo the Flea. Um, it was published from uh, well it was created by Spanish uh, programmers Paco and Paco who were based in Spain and um, it was basically you fall down into this cavern and that's your bugaboo there your flea and you've got to basically it's left right and jump and you've got to time your jump to get out of the cavern and um, there is this big flying bird pterodactyl thing which is going around um potentially gonna swallow up your bug and uh, yeah i think it's 85 levels is the base and you've got to try and find the uh, the exit very very addictive it's just got that classic one more go element to it uh, but it's funny a lot of, i mentioned it to people they what i've never heard of it but you know it, it is quite a scarce game to find today but it's one i always had you know from when i had a spectrum and uh one i always really really loved absolutely fantastic inventive idea i would imagine that the principle has been reused in a mobile game but if it hasn't there's there's an idea for someone <laughs> yeah, you just can't help but have one more go at it it's just got that addictive factor and that is what a game needs in my opinion Monty on the Run. So this was Monty Mole, and uh, he had a few games. This was, I believe, the first one, Monty on the Run. The graphics aren't quite as finessed, and when I started playing this one, I had played this one before, but I think the one that I actually enjoyed the most was one called Ulvitazain Monty. But in this one, I think you're, you're, you're collecting bits of his toolkit, like he's just picked up a little hammer there. And um, once again, it was sort of the manic minor principle sort of a, a platformer going through different levels however this one a bit more like jet set willy all the levels are interconnected so you decide where to go um saber wolf so yet another one from ultimate play the game a, a top-down adventure here where you uh, have to find you play saber man there and you have to find four bits of this amulet this set which make up the face of the actual wolf boy oh boy was this a fantastic game but one i did manage to complete thankfully they were quite generous with getting the extra lives and um, of course the magazines of the time magazines like crash and computer and video games um your sinclair that they they all printed maps of these games and i would study them and i put if it was like this i'd have it up on my wall just by the the tv and i'd uh, you know try and work out where i had to go um absolutely amazing amazing game and uh I know a friend of mine, a friend, a friend, a schoolmate of mine, and me were competing to see who could finish finish it the first, and um, he did actually beat me, but I did get there in the end, and it's uh, a very satisfying feeling, <laughs> finally finishing this uh, this great game, just superb. The ultimate play of the game company, are just fantastic. It was hit after hit after hit. The tail end ones for the Spectrum aren't quite as good, but there was a lot more competition and things were moving on then. But what they got out of the system, particularly when they did it, was just astonishing, really. And um, I feel this is even better than some of the 3D isometric ones they did, like Night Law and Alien 8. It's just more playable rather than anything, and the action is super quick. So I've, as much as I like the later games, the isometric ones, these earlier ones actually just edge it for me. And these are the, the ones I spent more time on next we got feud which was an adventure game of sorts but it's more like um a herbalist game where you go around and pick up different herbs it was designed by a guy called john pickford for binary design and published in 1987 so right at the end of the zx spectrum's life and um 
it was published under, I don't know if you remember the label's Bulldog software, uh, which was part of Mastertronic, and this was their very first game. So this came out, as, a, as I said, as a budget title, and it was one ninety nine. Now, it was a huge hit. I, I remember this was, I think it got to number one in the charts, probably just based on the price, and it ended up coming out for all the major sort of systems out there. But I absolutely loved it. Uh, I really, really did. It's the first game I think I ever played where I was going around picking up herbs but something that's quite a common a common part of my uh, uh, gaming play when I uh, play World of Warcraft so there you go um, but it's brilliant lovely big big graphics you can see how things have come along in the last sort of few years uh, while well, the Spectrum's been around and uh, the graphics are I mean this for the money was what a great choice what a game to give away uh, it just looks so so good as you can see But once again, this is one of those ones that you sort of, you had to find different parts. So I've got Burdock there. If I could find the Dandelion, um, I could then have the Teleport spell, and that would then open up some more gameplay. So initially, you're just wandering around the map here, looking for other bits of, um, other bit, other herbs and bit parts of recipes, so that you can then go ahead and uh, get some more power. But yeah, this is one of those games that you very much benefited from having a map because there's not a lot of the map on screen at any one time so it can be a little bit difficult to keep your direction but uh, very very uh, smooth graphics as you can see yeah good stuff feud and uh I still have the old blast of this one today because you can, once you've been playing it and you've picked up a lot of the herbs for about five, ten minutes, you're then, it really does open the game up. But we don't have that luxury of time today, but I wanted to show you, you know, a couple of minutes of gameplay while we were here. Wow, this is another game I've spent countless, countless time and days on, was The Hobbit, uh, based on the, the Tolkien book of course and this was a, an illustrated text adventure so not just plain text which a lot of these were and I used to love them one I remember absolutely loving from level nine was called snowball but uh, Hobbit here the Hobbit was fantastic because you were put in commands and it would pop up with a whole screen of, of sort of graphics as you made your way through the adventure um, I mean this is it this is how quickly the graphics actually loaded so you know, back in the day, this was literally a revelation. I mean, it looks pathetic now, but boy, oh boy, it was so good. It was well written. The text was excellent. It, it was adhered to the uh, to the original book, which was good. And um, you could, you know, with a little bit of hunting around, they did actually release a guidebook just on The Hobbit, but the magazines in the end printed like a walkthrough, so you could work your way right the way through and experience it. And you can do it in about half an hour if you've got all the... Um, if you've got all the you know the walkthrough and it is it's really really great right up to the very end um getting all the all the all the treasure at the end it's, it's really fantastic um but yeah fantastic beam software which um uh were the company behind it F uh, philip mitchell he was called and veronica melger and they came out under melbourne house who later did do the lord of the rings um Oh, they did the Fellowship of the Rings, came out in a similar sort of format. But yeah, Melbourne House, quite a big publisher back in the day for Spectrum. And there we are, look, I'm dead already. I mastered 2.5% before I got killed. <sighs> a bit rusty, you see. <laughs> okay, the last Ultimate Play of the Game, and once again, one of their earlier ones. Um, this was 48k as well, massive seller. Attic Attack, and... Uh, you just sort of, it's sort of, they call it arcade adventure, so you work your way through uh, the different levels there. And um, uh, so the aim of the, of the game is to get the golden key of ASG uh, by unlocking doors and, and avoiding the enemies, basically, as simple as that. Um, the screens are quite small, you know, each little level, but they obviously built like a template and then they could put different elements in um, and your uh, sort of your health and your energy goes down by the big chicken on the right there which uh, as you lose power or get hit you uh, that goes down further and further until eventually you die and there's hazards inside the levels as well like the uh, toxic mushrooms there <laughs> Brilliant, but this is still so playable today. I mean, it really, really is absolutely fantastic. You can see why it sold so many 
uh, copies back in the day. It was just, you know, fantastic. And of course, you know, Ultimate Play the Game and the Stamper Brothers went on to develop for the Nintendo systems around the time of, I think it was the SNES they started. I don't think it was the NES, but the SNES onwards did some big games for the N64, like Goldeneye. Um, Perfect Dark was one of theirs. Um, and then they started working on the Zelda games as well. And uh, I think ultimately Nintendo bought the company and um, that's where it went. So they, they recognized the talent. There we are. Good stuff. Chucky Egg. Now this one I used to play a lot with my sister. And it was released on all the big platforms of the day back in 1983. Um, it even came out on the... I'm pretty sure. Was this one based on um, Minor 2049? I'm not sure, but very, very similar to it um, on the Atari 2600. And uh, this was a good little game, you know, fantastically playable on every system I played it on, in all honesty. You just play that little guy there and you go up and down the platforms, you've got to get the eggs. You can pick up little bits of seed as well. And the levels get more and more crazy as you go along. But fantastic, really, and uh, they did a really good job of um, so you know, the levels actually sort of flowing into one another. Um, but A and F Software, that was the company, and yeah, this classic era, 1983. It was like anyone and their uncle. If you could come up with a good game, you had an incredible market there, ready to uh, ready to try it out. Here we are with level two. But yeah, this was a classic and I spent a lot of time on this. And it, once again, it's still really good fun to play today on the emulator. Good stuff. And the last of my ten is Horace Goes Skiing. So this was uh, published by uh, Sinclair. And um, it's basically Frogger to begin with. You've got to get across the road. You pick up your skis. Then you've got to get back across the road. And believe me, it is tough. It took me a few goes before I managed to do it. Because it's really, really quick. But now that you've got your skis. And I've got some money in the bank. I can hit hit the slopes, as it were. And do a bit of um, bit of slalom down the, uh, <laughs> down the track here. <laughs> Absolutely bananas. But it was a big hit once again. There was a few... Horus Games, and uh, I think it was three in total, all published by Sinclair, and I think they're all quite a bit of fun. This is almost as close as the Spectrum got to their own sort of Mario, really. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a good one, and uh, one I played a long, long time. I really did. But as I said, this is just ten of, I could have chosen probably 30 or 40 different games um, for the Spectrum that I spent a lot of my teenage years playing and uh, I absolutely loved it and then I think what was the system I got after that when I got rid of my Spectrum I think it went on to I got an Atari 800XL that was my computer after this so uh, but I always had a soft spot for the Spectrum and uh, that's never ever gone and today I relive it through the the, the emulator JS Specky 3 and I go through little phases here it is and you can just all the games are uploaded to the internet database internet um, online database you can choose whatever you like and there's all the different versions of jet set willy including lots of fan made remakes and off you go to the races it's fantastic so i'll put a link to js specky in the description down below and also the great world of spectrum website which will give you loads of supporting information as well if you want to look at some of the old magazines and, and things like that it's superb so there i hope you enjoyed today's video if you have do please give it the thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of these sorts of videos and do leave a comment down below if you've enjoyed this one and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.